Take your Bible to the Proverbs, or excuse me, Proverbs, yes. Chapter 31, Proverbs 31, not Acts 1. Remember from last week? That sounded like a cow laugh, was it? Uh, it was a loud laugh then, all right. Proverbs chapter 31, are you glad you're in the house of God? Yeah. What a crowd, what a crowd. I think we got well over 200 today, amen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and if we don't, if it's 199, we, we'll round it up, amen? <laughs> Evangelistically speaking, right? Well, man, we're so glad to have you, and if you're a first-time guest, we really are so, so happy to have you with us today at Soul Quest Church. We are... One year and about two weeks old. And God is doing some unbelievable things in our midst. And we give him all the praise and all the glory for it. Proverbs chapter 31. Do we have the words on the screen in case you do not have a copy of the word of God? Proverbs chapter 31. Let me just go with the screen, okay? Verse 10. We're going to read down through verse 31. A little bit more scripture than we normally read. It says, An excellent wife who can find. For her worth is far above jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She looks for wool and flax and works with her hands in delight. She is like a merchant ship. Now, don't go home and tell your wife she's like a merchant ship, all right? Just... <laughs> But that's what it says. She brings her food from afar. She rises also while it is still night and gives food to her household and portions to her maidens. Verse 16 says, she considers a field and buys it. From her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She senses that her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out at night. Verse 19, she stretches out her hands. To the distaff and her hands grasp the spindle. She extends her hands to the poor and she stretches out her hand to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes coverings for herself. Her cloth clothing is fine linen and purple. Verse 23, her husband is known in the gates. When he sits among the elders of the land, she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies belts to the tradesmen. Strength and dignity are her clothing. And she smiles at the future. She's optimistic. She opens her mouth in wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not, does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and bless her. Her husband also praises her saying, Many daughters have done nobly, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the product of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Bless it now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Moms rock! Moms rock. We love you moms. And this day is all about you. And we want to take just a few moments and... We don't want to beat you up. I've been in church services before when it's Mother's Day. Man, the preacher beats moms up. We're not going to beat you up today, but we want to encourage you. But also we want to challenge you to be the mom, the, the rocking mom that God would have you uh, to be. I, I doubt very seriously today that I say really anything that maybe you've not heard before. As a matter of fact, I've preached so many Mother's Day messages, and, and, and you've been in, some of you have been in church a long time. You've heard all kinds of sermon titles. Man, I've preached uh, about Wonder Woman and, and the Bionic. I'm dating myself. The Bionic Woman. How many remember the Bionic Woman? All the old people. Amen. <laughs> you remember the Bionic Man? The $6 million man? Squirrel, I'm sorry. Steve Austin, man. That dude was bad. It was a, anyway, so I, I, the virtuous woman, uh, uh, you know, we've heard all these messages on Mother's Day. We've heard messages on, on Jacob, the mother of Moses, about love and sacrifice, about Hannah, uh, the mother of Samuel, and how she dedicated him to the Lord. We, we've heard Mother's Day messages left and right. So today I just thought what we would do is walk our way down through Proverbs chapter 31 and just ask a couple of questions, actually three questions today. 
So if you got a listening guy when you came in, I want you to jot these things down. Number one, how should we treat our mothers? The first question really has to do with me and you, and then the second and the third question really had to do with moms. But how should we treat our mothers? The Bible says to give them honor or give honor to whom honor is due. The Bible says to honor your father and your mother. Now listen, friend, that's one of the big ten. You mean, are those Ten Commandment things, are they still for us today? Absolutely. Honor your mom. Well, I don't agree with my mom. Well, she probably don't agree with you. Right? All the mom said. Don't be scared. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 20, the Bible says, Honor your father and and your mother. Two quick things. Write these down. Husbands should honor their wives. Husbands should honor their wives. First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. You husbands in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way. You better. As with someone weaker since she is a woman. Speaking of physically weaker. Now I've seen some women that could take a man. You better watch out. Some of them. <laughs> and show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered. Husbands, honor your wives. Ephesians 5 and verse 33. Love your wives. Look what he says. Nevertheless, each individual among you also is to love his own wife even as himself and the wife must be. Uh, we won't, that's for another day. Honor, husbands, honor your wives. Now, why is this so important on Mother's Day? Men, listen to me. Men, before your career, before, listen to this, before your church involvement, honor your wives. You know one of the very best things you can do for your children is for the children to see daddy, the husband, honoring their mother. That's one of the very best things that, that, that your kids could ever see. Now, I want you to understand this, men. Listen to me. Before your career, this is what's so bad. This is what's, what's happened in American society today. Our men are putting everything else in front of their relationship with their wives. Their wife, not wives. That's illegal. Unless you live in a certain state, I guess. I don't know. We put our careers before our wife. We put our hobbies before our wives. Come on, men. Can I just, can I, can I preach to the men for a second? We, we put our kids before our wives. Friend, listen to what I'm telling you. Husbands, honor your wives by putting them, not first, but second, Jesus number one and your wife number two. Honor them. Honor them. How do we honor them? You love her. You provide for her. You lead her spiritually. You lead her spiritually. You lead her spiritually. You know, in most churches of all denominations, if you really look deep, most churches are ran by women. I thank God for faithful women. I, amen. I, I thank God for women who are sold out and committed to Jesus Christ. But I believe with all of my heart that the Bible says that the man should be the spiritual leader in his home and in the church. Honor your wives. How do you do it? Love her, provide for her, lead her spiritually. Help with the kiddos. Right? You ever seen a child go out the door and daddy's put his clothes on? Shoes on the wrong feet. Laces not tied up. Hair's all everywhere. Shirts inside out. But help. Help. Number one, husbands should honor their wives. Number two, children should honor their mothers. Children should honor their mothers. Kids, teenagers, do you give honor to your mom. 
Not just today, but every day. You've only got one mom. You'll never have another. Love her, respect her, obey her while she is here. I guarantee you there's some people in here that would love, that would absolutely love to tell their mama today they love her. But she's gone. Love her. Love her. It's a poem I found. I don't normally read poems, but I thought it was pretty good. If you have a smile for mother, give it now. If you have a kind word, speak it now. She'll not need it when the angels greet her at the golden gate. Give the smiles while she's living. If you wait, twill be too late. If you have a flower for mother, pluck it now. Place it gently on her bosom, plant a kiss on her brow. What cares she when life is over for the flower that blooms below? She will have her share up yonder scattered at her feet galore. Hey, if you got a mom that's still here, you say, well, you know, our relationship is not really what it ought to be. You know, we've, we've been kind of in a struggle lately. We've been kind of fighting. With, who cares? Listen, friend, life is too short. Get it right. Amen. Love mama. Honor mama. Kids, children, honor your mother. Doesn't matter how old you are, you honor. My mom's here today. I'm sure she don't agree with everything I've done in my life, and, and, and I pretty much agree with everything she's done, but... I'm going to love her till the day she dies. And I hope that's not for a long time. But honor your mom. Honor your mom. How should we treat mothers? Honor them. But number two, what is a mother to be? Look in uh, Proverbs 31, verse 26 and verse 27. She opens her mouth in wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. What is a mother to be? Now think about your mom. When, when I, let me give you a, a little good Baptist outline here. You know what that means? All the words start with the same letter. Okay, so mark them down. Here we go. Let me give them to you all and we can come back to them. Maker, mender, moderator, and mentor. That's a mom for you. What's a mom to be? Number one, a maker. What does she do? Man, I, I'm blessed not only to have the greatest wife on the planet, but also got a wife that's an unbelievable, loving, selfless. Austin did a video the other day of his mom. and Did y'all see the video? He called her selfish instead of selfless, but he didn't mean that. <laughs> he was trying to be funny, you know, did a little blooper. When, but, uh, but Tammy, not only is she a great, great wife, but she's an outstanding outstanding mother she's a maker my wife loves to cook now I'm gonna, you're gonna think less of me today but uh, this was her idea and you know I was gonna go home we had kind of done this thing and we, she was gonna have a meal for her mom today and uh, I was gonna grill out you know and then she was gonna make a few I hate to make mom do anything you know on Mother's Day right <laughs> don't those stones yet and she said, right about the time we get out and we take pictures at the, at the Mother's Day photo booth, if you haven't taken your picture after, after the service, Elizabeth, where's Elizabeth? She's going to be back in the back taking pictures. And next Sunday, we'll have those developed and have everybody who has one picture of uh, Mother's Day. But anyway, so uh, she said, by the time we get done with all that and we get home, it'll be 1, 1.30 and everybody will be starving to death. Let me just go ahead and put the pork chops and the chicken in the oven. She loves it. How many, of you, how many of you ladies, your moms, love, ladies or moms, how many of you love to cook? How many do not like cooking? <laughs> Molly, I can't believe that. Um, you mean all that good stuff you've been bringing to church for years, somebody else made it and brought it, huh? You got that me, W. James, didn't you? <laughs> Is that a grocery store, E.W. James? My granny's on the front row. Boy, she can cook. Woo! All right, she wants to stand up. All right. Yeah. Hmm? She won't me to remind you that she's 97 years young. Be careful there, Granny. Sit down there. Granny, told, she's been telling Mama, how old has she been saying for years she's going to live to be? 
105. I asked her today, I said, well, what happens when you get to 105? You, I mean, is that it or what? You know, I think there's something about this, you know, saying something, right? She's going to live to be 105. I love Granny. But Granny can cook. My mom can. My mom makes the very best broccoli casserole in the world. I'm telling you. And, and so uh, a mom, uh, a mother is a maker. She cooks and she cleans and, and she makes the cupcakes and peanut. There's nothing better than a mom who makes peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Moms do so much more. But they're makers, they're menders. She mends broken hearts and skinned knees. Man, when I, my mother was working overtime when I was a kid. I was at the emergency room. I was climbing fences, falling over, hitting shovels, got stitches all over my head and falling on ladders and tearing up my knee. And, um, you know, trying to jump ditches and, and you know, all them. And my wife, same way. I remember when I went to pastor in Trenton, Tennessee, we hadn't been there a week. Madison was on the playground in Trenton and busted her head wide open. Had to go get a bunch of stitches at the emergency room. And about three weeks later, she was catching. She was a catcher. And she was uh, at softball practice and turned her head because she's a squirrel, you know, because she's like her daddy. <laughs> you know, and she didn't have her face mask on. Catchers, you know, wear your face mask all the time when you're catching a pitcher. And the pitcher just did her thing, coming in about 40 miles an hour. And Madison was like, what? Well, boom, you know. <laughs> 35 stitches later, you know. I, she's screaming, Daddy, Daddy, and Mama's having a, 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 what do you call them, anxiety attack? I said, Tammy, you drive. I picked Madison up. She's bleeding everywhere. I threw her in the back of my truck, literally. Threw her in the back. I jumped in. I said, she, I said go to the emergency room. She's like, where is that? <laughs> it's at the hospital. <laughs> oh, I don't know where is it. Turn left. Turn right. Turn left. 30 some odd stitches later, Madison's, I mean, moms, you know, do what moms, I remember one time Austin was, was a, we had this nice Aloha pole, it wasn't underground, but it was above ground, it was one of those really big ones, you know, 36 feet or something, it was big, round one in our backyard in Trenton when we lived there, and Austin was walking on the top, you know, and how you do, whoop, boom, mama! Thank God for mamas, amen? <laughs> mamas are makers and menders and moderators. My sister, Tammy, who's 18 months older than me. Oh, man, you're talking about some fights. We were younger. I don't know. Mama, you remember when she hit me in the head with a baseball bat? If, she, if you don't remember that, I'm telling on her now. She did. Why well, I'm not thinking straight today. You know, and mom's moderate. Kids fighting and carrying on. And she's a, a mentor. She teaches us how to talk and how to walk and how to live. You may, moms, listen. Here's the challenge. Don't, don't just say things to your kids. But set an example for your kids. Because I, here's what I've discovered. Whatever you do, your daughter's going to do. My... Somebody asked one time, can Madison cook? I said, yeah, she can cook anything, just about anything my, my wife can. Because through the years, she's watched her. She's always in the kitchen, taste testing, you know. She can do it. Why? She's watched. Tammy, I don't know that she said, hey, you put three eggs in this, you do this. Because Tammy don't even know. Because every time she cooks something, she has a different. But it always turns out good. My wife doesn't use recipes. It's like just, you know, Paula Dean, more sugar and more butter. Amen. Madison just has watched her. Mentor, mentor your kids. What's a mother to be? But last but not least, what's a mother to do? What's a mother to do? Moms, I'm going to say something to you. I want you to listen closely. I'm going to get deeply spiritual for a second. Moms, the devil is out to steal the heart and soul of your children. The devil is out to steal the heart and soul of your child. He would love to see your children corrupted and influenced by the culture and the society that we live in. So what do you do? What do you do? Number one, mothers, teach your children the truth of God's Word. 
teach your children the truth of God's word. Is Deuteronomy chapter 31 verses 12 and 13 on the screen? Deuteronomy 31, 12. And assemble the people, the men and the women, watch this, and children, and the alien who is in your town, so that, that stranger, that's not like an alien. Amen? The alien who is in your, I know some of you believe in that stuff, okay? I, I, you know, my daughter believes in women in the ocean that have like no legs but have a fin. What is it called? Yeah! My father-in-law is here. He believes in Bigfoot. My daughter-in-law believes in mermaids. That's why we have altar calls. Amen. The alien who is in your town so that they may hear and learn and fear the Lord your God. And be careful to observe all the words of this law. Their children who have not known will hear and learn to fear the Lord your God. As long as you live on the land which you are about to cross the Jordan to possess. Mom and dad, here's, here's what we to do. Dads, moms, both. It's what we to do. Mothers, teach your children the truth of God's word. And then 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. For I am mindful of the, of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am sure that it is in you as well. It's passed down passed down. My granny's here today. Did I tell y'all my granny was here today? Yeah. My granny reads through the Bible every single year. Sometime when she, she used to call me, she doesn't call me anymore, I think she lost my number. She used to call me usually around the end of October. As little as three or four years ago she would call me. She'd say, guess what? I said, what? She said, I just finished reading the Bible through the... She's supposed to read it, you know, it's, it's a year thing, January, December, but she always finishes it early. She loves the Word of God. Teach your children the Word of God. Start when they're young. The Bible says to train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from... So it's important that we start from the very beginning, from birth. It's, ev it's even better. Where's Ellen at? Ellen. Ellen. Where's Ellen? Wave at me, Ellen. Hey, girl. She, she ain't waving. Where is she? There she is. Hey, girl. She got a little baby bump right here. How many months are you? Yeah. I, I've, known, I've known moms when they just are 14 weeks or whatever, reading the Bible to their baby when their baby's in the womb. That's a great thing. Teach when they're young. Start them off in the Word of God because the Word of God is powerful. Mothers, teach your children the truth of God's Word. Number two, mothers, be an example to your children. Children, learn by example. We talked about that already. Moms, let your spiritual life be consistent. Let them see Jesus in you. Set an example. Attend church. Can I get that in? Can I get that in? Is it all right I get that in? Amen. Hey, moms, set an example. Attend church. Find, 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 whether it's here or someone else, find a church and be plugged in. Have devotions, be godly, live godly. And then the last but not least, mothers, tell your children about Jesus. Tell your children about Jesus. Somebody come up and play for me today. Mothers, tell your children about Jesus. Tell them from birth what Jesus did for them. Tell them about heaven and how they can get there. Tell your children about Jesus. Moms, there's no greater responsibility than to make certain your child receives Jesus Christ. Don't leave any behind. You know, if you want to be a rocking mom, I mean a rocking mom. I'm not talking about a mom that wears skinny jeans and high heels. I, I'm talking about a rocking mom spirit. That's okay. I mean, nothing wrong with a little short wear. I'm talking about a spiritual rocking mom. You want to be one of those? First of all, you need to know Jesus yourself. It's great when moms know Jesus. It's great when moms have a relationship with God. That's awesome. If you're a mom here today and you've never asked Christ Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, I want to challenge you today. Listen to me. The greatest thing you'll ever do in all of your life is to give your heart and life to Him. You want to be a rocking mom today? Make sure you 
have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You want to be a rocking mom today? Then you make sure that your kids know Jesus. You want to be a rocking mom today? Live for Jesus every day. Set an example for your family. Let others see Jesus Christ in you. Be a rocking mom. I believe with all my heart that moms have such an awesome influence over the children. What is that phrase, that little saying was in that movie? The hand rocks. Great. You're not supposed to watch that, but what was that? Rules. Rules the world. Mom, you have an awesome responsibility. And that's not scriptural or anything, but... Man, what an awesome responsibility. What an awesome privilege you have to be an influence. children. You want to be a rocking mom? You want to be a rocking mom? Then maybe you need to take that first step towards reconciliation. Listen, life's too short, isn't it? To be at all. You want to be a rocking mom? Get in the Word of God. You want to be a rocking mom? Spend time with God in prayer. You want to be a rocking mom? Be faithful to God's house. Mom, we love you. Moms, we love you. Moms, we thank God for you. What an awesome responsibility you have.